Hello, welcome everyone to the, today's session. Um, my name is Alison Wan, and I'm, and I'm joined by my colleagues Abdulazim Zumari and uh, Tistash Mohammed today. Um, I would like to start our workshop today with a uh, land acknowledgement. <clears throat> um, for UBC Vancouver uh, campus, we respectfully acknowledge that the land on which we work and live is um, on the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Muskegon people. Um, and for UBC Okanagan campus, we respectfully acknowledge that the land on which we work and live is uh, the traditional ancestral um, <clears throat> and unceded territory of the Okanagan people. So we'll start with um, an outline for today's, uh, what we plan for the next hour. Um, so uh, on the next slide, I'll talk about what we um, expect to achieve in this session. Um, and I'll give a brief uh, ba uh, background information on student experience of instruction at UBC. Um, and then I'll touch on some instructor, uh, the changes to the instructor reports um, over the last couple of years. Um, I'll, and then some background about the the say data, um, how they are, the data, how that is. Um, and Abdulazim will we, we'll move into um, talking about the metrics, uh, the interpolated median percent variable and the dispersion index. Um, and then we'll move into a uh, quick uh, introduction of the uh, instructor and academic unit dashboard. And finally, some group activity, and then we'll ha hopefully we'll have some time for Q&A at the end of the session. All right, so um, at the end of today's session, um, uh, we hope to um, provide you with a better understanding of the same metrics used uh, by UBC. Um, we'll um, explain the relationship between the measures used um, and we'll, um, how you may interpret uh, by using some sim simple graph scatter plots to interrogate state data in a more meaningful way. A little bit uh, of background on like what we've been doing in the last couple of years and the changes that were introduced to the instructor reports. Um, so here's a little timeline as to what we did. Um, so back in 2000, we used to report mean and standard deviation. Um, so back in 2016, we replaced the standard deviation with the dispersion index. Um, and we then introduced the percent favorable in uh, 2017. Um, and the link um, would actually bring you to a, a sort of a blog post or an article on um, how that was introduced. Um, and then in 2018, we replaced um, the mean with the inter interpolated median. Um, and then between 2018 through 2020, um, during the two year transition, we reported both the mean and standard deviation along with the new metrics. Um, you can find out more at the link um, in the resources link. Um, and what we have here is uh, what an instructor would normally get out of the survey system blue. Um, this is a snapshot of the U university questions, uh, re uh, sort of the, that portion of that report. Um, you see here uh, six. Uh, questions listed uh, with a little hist with hist histograms as to uh, just um, showing you showing the instructor uh, how students answer each of the question um, um, strongly from strongly disagree to strongly agree um, the numbers of students um, actually responded how they responded to each question um, and then following that uh, histogram block we have a table that gives similar information um, number uh, big n on the on the right starting from the left uh, big n the number of students invited um, small n number of students uh, responded s d strongly disagree d disagree and neutral a agree and then strongly agree a um, s a um, the last three columns are the metrics that we are going to cover today um, the interpolated median i m percent favorable percent favorable a pf and then dispersion index d i um, so uh, we also have basically aside from the graphs we also have a, a table summary for uh, easier to read now a little bit about the say data itself um, so say data are <clears throat> categorical, categorical, um, but ordinal in nature. Um, ordinal means that it has a sense of order. Um, it goes from strongly agree, uh, agree, and then neutral, disagree, and then strongly disagree. It has a sense of um, order. Um, strongly agree is higher, uh, better, um, and then and so on. So and and for the university, actually for all all the questions that we have, um, we we use a balance like. 
rating scale. Um, and for the university module items, um, we use a five-point Likert scale, um, strongly disagree to strongly agree. Um, some faculty questions used a balanced seven-point Likert scale. So um, going from, say, entirely disagree to entirely agree. Um, but uh, same thing with the neutral, with neutral in the middle and all of the um, the options being uh, balanced. You know, it's nature about the balanced like rating scales. Um, it has an equal number of just positive and like or favorable and negative or unfavorable response categories. Um, often, but not, necess not necessarily, um, center around a neutral response category. Um, so, uh, you know, one example or on the on the top right is. Uh, you know, going from status smiley face to happy face. Um, and then, um, and but it could still have an even or odd, it could have both even or odd number of responses. Um, so the second, the bottom one here, you still, uh, even though with a even number of responses, but um, they're still distributed 50% uh, on each side. Um, and um, finally, just to you know, take note on um, unlike unbalanced scales, um, the bound of what is favor what is favorable are well defined from the middle point. And then I'll, I'll hand it over to Abdulun. Hey, okay, thank you, Alison. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so I'll I'll take over and, and talk about the three measures that are, are reported that Alison showed in the instructor report: percent favorable dispersion index and the interpolated median. Um, percent favorable uh, dispersion index, which was introduced very soon back in 2016. So I'll start with that one, uh, with the dispersion index. Please attach, please. Um, this particular measure, uh, which replaced the standard deviation, uh, you think of it as a measure of how dispersed the student responses are. And this particular measure, uh, which we obtained from the literature, uh, is suitable for ordinal data. So it was actually designed for ordinal data. And it has a range of value from zero to one. Uh, a value of zero indicate there is no dispersion in the data. All the student respondent or all respondent responded with the same uh, with the same category. So they all agreed or they all strongly agreed, uh, et cetera. A value of one, on the other hand, uh, is the extreme where the respondent is split 50-50 between the two extreme responses. So 50% agreed, strongly agreed, and 50% strongly disagree. In our data at UBC, uh, dispersion index rarely exceed 0.85. So we don't see uh, anything higher than that. And I have yet to see a one. Uh, and uh, if the dispersion is higher than 0.85, usually it is um, uh, it indicates polarized rating. And it's often associated with the small sections where the survey didn't meet our recommended minimum response rate. That's the RMRR. Uh, recommended minimum response rate. Uh, these are our own kind of general guidelines. Uh, low dispersion would be anything less than 0.25, and, and you can see medium high and uh, extremely high would be anything that's greater than 0.8 or 0.85. Um, as I said before, uh, I'm happy to see uh, a, a dispersion index of one, and it's rarely in our data exceeds 0.85. These are three examples that shows um, uh, the calculation of the dispersion index actually does not involve the numerical values of one, two, three, four, five for the categories. It just simply looks to see where the responses are. Uh, and that's why it's suitable for this type of uh, categorical data. So if you look at example one on the left, uh, we see that the majority of the respondent agreed with the question. And, and, and the other 20, the other remaining students, are not far off. They are in the next uh, category. And so that resulted in a low dispersion of 0.22. If we look at the second example in the middle, this is a high dispersion. We see that the student responses are all over the categories. And this resulted in a high dispersion of almost 0.9. Uh, and of course, we see the extreme, which uh, dispersion index of one, when the sickest respondents uh, split evenly between the two extreme values. 30 of them strongly disagreed, and 30 strongly agreed. Next slide, please. Uh, percent favorable uh, is a simple, uh, very intuitive measure. We simply take the number of responses that are favorable, like on the five-point scale, that would be agree and strongly agree, and express that as a percentage of the total uh, received responses. 
as I said, this is simple, it is intuitive, but it is somewhat blunt because it does not really distinguish between uh, responses of agree and strongly agree in the five-point scale. Right? Both of them are just favorable. One and two are unfavorable, and three is neutral. So it's it's kind of that blunt in, and it does distinguish between the uh, between the different uh, responses. Um, before I get into the uh, into the interpolated median, uh, I'm just going to talk about the median and the distribution around the value of the median. Uh, I think at one point when I mentioned distribution around the median, Judy corrected me and said, um, isn't the median the number in the middle? Yes, the median is the 50th percentile. It is the number in the middle. But we are talking about the distribution around the value of the median. So we have two instructors that we're going to follow for the next few slides, instructor A and B. Uh, the first instructor have 18 responses that are even. And so the median of the 50th percentile is simply the average of the ninth and the 10th responses. So it's a four. And we see that um, there are nine responses in black that are equal to the median. And that's what we mean by the distribution around the value. So nine of them are equal to the median. There are six responses in light blue that are greater than the median. And there are three responses in red that are below the value of the median. And that's what we mean by the distribution around the value of the median. And these are the things that we take into consideration when we calculate the interpolated median. I'll show that in a minute. If we look at an instructor B again, we see here we have actually the arrow is pointing to the wrong, the arrow should be pointing to the underlined four. The 10th response is the, uh, is the median. And again, we see that we have nine responses in black that are equal to the median, all the fours. Uh, there are two fives that are greater than the value of the median. So there is two responses greater than the median. And we have eight responses that are below the median. So this is what we look for um, uh, to calculate the interpolated median. And this is what makes the interpolated median actually a reflection of the distribution of the responses. Next slide, please. So this is the formula for the interpolated median. Uh, the interpolated median is simply an adjusted median. So we take the median, the customary median that we are all familiar with, and we adjust it by the amount uh, that you see, um, n plus minus n minus divided by 2n. And that n plus is the number of responses greater than the median, n minus is the number of responses smaller than the median, and n is the number of responses equal to the median. When n is zero, uh, oh, before that. So this quantity, if we take the absolute value of it, is less than 0.5, meaning that if we take a median of four and we adjust it, if it happened to be, depending on the distribution, if the adjustment is upwards, then the maximum we get to is 4.5. And if we adjust it downwards, the maximum we go to, the minimum we go to is 3.5. So the adjustment value uh, does not exceed uh, 0.5. If n is zero, which indicate that there is no responses that are equal to the median, then simply the interpolated median is equal to the median and there is no uh, no interpolation is necessary. Uh, so we're going to follow with our two instructors A and B in the next slide. And again, these are the same distributions. Uh, if we look at an instructor A, uh, we have n plus the number of responses greater than the median, which is the five. There are six of them. There are nine responses, n greater equal to the median, and the n minus is three. And so the interpolated median is simply the median of four adjusted by a quantity of six minus three divided by two times nine. Oops. In this case, it's 0.2. And because it's a positive value, the interpolated median uh, of the median is adjusted upwards by two tenths of a point and our interpolated median is 4.2. And in the second example, we have more responses that are less than the median, eight. And so this, the Adjustment quantity will be negative, two minus eight, that's minus six divided by 18, two times nine, um, that's about minus 0.3. And so the median of four is adjusted downwards by three tenths of a point, resulting in an interpolated median of 3.7. And we see in the next slide that again, continuing with the two instructors, that the histogram shows us that the two distributions are markedly different. They both have the same median of four, one have an interpolated mean of 4.2, the percent favorable, which would be the sum of the fours and five. So that's nine plus seven divided by the total number of responses is 84%. And in the second example for instructor B, it is the nine plus two responses of four and five, uh, except as, as a percentage, this is 58%. So we already see that there is some sort of a 
uh, a connection between the interpolated median and percent favorable. It is not as simple as the higher the interpolated median, the higher the percent favorable. Uh, it's an interesting relationship that we'll talk about uh, about next. But first, I'm going to show you in the next slide the case where there is no value in the data that's equal to the median, where n is zero, and percent and the interpolated median is simply equal to the median. So uh, in structure C, the median is the average of the nine responses. So there is a uh, 16 responses, even number. And so the median is the average between five and two, that's 3.5. We don't have any value in the data, of course, that's 3.5. Our responses go from one to five, uh, discrete values. And in the second example, it's average between four and three, it's also 0 .5, 0 0.5, 3.5. So in both cases, the uh, interpolated median is equal to the median equal to 3.5. Um, uh, don't worry about the dispersion index at the end. Uh, this is just the expected value for the dispersion index given the distribution, but uh, we'll talk about that uh, later if we have time. Um, so uh, the interpolated median has a differentiating power because it takes the distribution into account. And this is actually the graph on the left is 83 um, evaluations from 2019. So these are actually 83 instructors they all have a mean of 3.4. So the average, which is the mean, is 3.4. On a scale of one to five, 3.4 will be considered low. But if we look at the interpolated median on the x-axis and the percent favor for those 83 instructors, we see that there is a wide range. Uh, the interpolated median goes from 3.2 to 3.8. And the percent favorable goes from just below 40%, about 37%, to as high as 76%. So we see that uh, if we look at an instructor A, B, and C, the one in the bottom, the one in the, one in the middle, and the one at the top, we, we see that uh, at least but exactly two of those uh, have 50% or more of the students rated them favorably. And in one case, C, uh, three out of four, 76%, more than three out of four, rated their experience favorably. And so, um, and we look at the distributions of those three instructors, the scores on, on, the, on the histograms, we see that they are markedly different. So markedly different distribution of the scores, the same mean, and yet we have a range of interpolated medians and percent favorables. And this shows the, um, illustrate the power of the interpolated median uh, as a measure of the center of the data to appropriately capture and represent the, the distribution of the, uh, of the respondent perspectives. And next slide, please. So the relationship between interpolated and percent favorable is kind of underpins this whole idea of using those measures. Uh, and so if we plot if for any question, this is happened to be question UMI5, but for any question, if we plot the interpolated median of each instructor uh, and, and the, the percent favorable, uh, uh, we see at a glance that an interpolated median of 3.5 and a percent favorable at 50%, that point there, the pivot point, uh, uh, maybe this dash can point to it. So this, the pivot point at an interpolated median of 3.5 and 50% divide the data into two parts. The upper right, where 96 of the instructors are, uh, they all receive 50% or more favorable responses. And the one in the bottom, about 4% of the instructors for that question in that year, uh, received less than 50% uh, responses. Um, so why 3.5? If you remember when we talk about, if you recall when we talked about the interpolation, we said that the adjust amount, the adjust the adjustment amount factor is uh, less than 0.5. The maximum it gets to, if we round it, is 0.5. So if we think of a median of four, which is the, the, the lowest favorable response, if we adjust it upwards, it go to 4.5. If we adjust it downwards, it would go to 3.5. And so 3.5 is, you can think of it as the lower bound for a favorable response. And this is true for all balanced, uh, balanced designs. And we can see that uh, when we show some other distributions as well. So continuing uh, in the next slide with this relationship. Uh, uh, so uh, because the data is in the upper right and the lower left, uh, and by mathematical necessity, there should be no data in the upper left or the bottom right. Uh, meaning that uh, if the interpolated median is greater than 3.5, then necessarily 
the percent favorable would be about 50 percent and if the interpolated median is less than 3.5 by necessity the um, percent favorable is less than 50 percent uh, uh, and again within the context of interpolation the uh, we understand uh, the response for example of four to represent a range of respondent perspective that's bordering on neutral to strong level. And if we do the interpolation based on the distribution of the data, then 3.5, as I mentioned earlier, would be the lower bound for an agree response. And so it is the pivot point for this, uh, for this relationship. Uh, more on this relationship. So we take the same data that's in the graph. Those, uh, all the instructors question five, uh, for that particular year. And if we put it in a table, we have uh, across in the table, we have the dispersion index. So I'm trying to bring in the effect of the dispersion index on this relationship. Uh, uh, across, we have the dispersion index that goes from zero to greater than 0.85. So we have eight classes of dispersion index. And down, we have the interpolated median going from less than three all the way to five. The first three rows, um, correspond to an interpolated median greater than 3.5. So the, uh, the the bottom row is less than 3.3 and then less than 3.5. The third row is 3.5 to less than four. So the three, up, uh, three top rows of this table correspond to the upper right quadrant and the bottom two rows correspond to the bottom left quadrant in the graph. So if we, if we look at the first row, we see that um, there are 40 instructors. So the, the number in this in each study, the number of instructors that in that category. And in brackets, we have the percent favorable. So 40 instructors with an average uh, percent favorable of 100 percent, they all receive the five because the dispersion is zero. And if we go right in the first row, we see that as the dispersion increases, percent favorable decreases. Is it touch maybe you can follow me on that? And the same thing in the second row, we see that as the dispersion increases from left to right, percent favorable in brackets decreases. And the same is true on the third row. That's And those three rows correspond to that to the 96% that's in the upper quadrant. And the bottom two rows, which correspond to the lower quadrant, we see that the higher the dispersion, the higher the percent favorable would be but it does not reach 50% because we know that all the instructors in the lower uh, bottom quadrant did not receive 50%, uh, uh, but they are all uh, under 50%. So uh, what we conclude from this one is that in the upper quadrant, the, for a given interpolated median, the higher the dispersion, the higher would be, the lower would be the percent favorable. In the bottom quadrant, the higher the dispersion, the higher would be the percent favorable. We're going to focus now in the next slide on the uh, on the upper uh, on the upper quadrant. So this is actually uh, a close up of the upper quadrant. The origin is three point five and fifty percent, and we divided that uh, into we used two vertical lines at four and four point five, and a horizontal line at seventy five. So we divided it into six uh, sub quadrant. Uh, we see that in the upper right, uh, where there is fifty eight percent of the instructors, the dispersion index on average is 0.25. Compared to the two percent of the instructors in the lower in the quadrant below that, with a mean dispersion of almost 0.53. So again, for a given interpolated median, uh, the higher the percent, uh, the the higher the dispersion, the higher the lower will be the percent favorable. We're going to talk about that when we look into how to integrate the data within context. Right. So if we if we imagine a regression line, kind of gets uh, the line that goes through the middle of this uh, cloud. Uh, the, the, the percent favorable and interpolated median go hand in hand. As we go off the diagonal, uh, that's where it gets interesting. And, and we will talk about that when we again look at the data within that context. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, I mentioned earlier that this relationship holds for any balanced uh, Likert type design uh, 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 scale. And we have but this data is from um, the Loy School. It has um, uh, it's a question that uses a seven-point scale, and we see that the pivot point in this relationship uh, is at four point five interpolated median and fifty percent favorable. Right, 
And the 4.5, if you think about the seven-point scale that is balanced, that means there is three response, uh, responses that are uh, unfavorable, three that are favorable, and one neutral. So the three that are unfavorable is one, two, and three. Four is neutral. And five, six, and seven would correspond to the favorable responses. So the lowest favorable response is five. And the pivot point would be 5 minus 0. 0.5 would be 4.5. Um, so uh, again, this relationship holds for all uh, balanced design uh, uh, scales. So now we're going to see how we can interpret the data within the context. Um, within context, so this is the data from one academic unit. If we click again, uh, visit Ash, we will see the data on the left. Yeah, and one more time, thank you. So um, again, uh, this is one academic unit. The instructors are split into two groups, uh, one in the upper right quadrant, where the percent favorable exceeded 50%, and the interpolated median exceeded 3.5. And the bottom left quadrant, where the interpolated median is less than 3.5, and percent favorable is less than 50%. And again, there should be no data in the upper left or the bottom right uh, by mathematical necessity. Uh, the red dot, uh, if you can point uh, to, to those, the red dot, uh, the red dot is the uh, the um, aggregate for that academic unit, and it corresponds to an interpolated median of 4.2 percent favorable of 76 percent, and the dispersion index of uh, 0.52. Uh, so we're going to pick an instructor A, C, D, and B, and talk about their uh, evaluation of the student experience of an instruction of an instruction uh, within this context. Uh, so if we start with an instructor A, uh, and if you look at the left, we see that the interpolated median is 3.9, percent favorable is 80% with a dispersion that's moderate at 3.35. So an instructor A, uh, if that instructor, um, student's experience of instruction is to be judged based on the interpolated median of 3.9, or the mean for that matter, or the median, uh, they would have been deemed to be below average. However, their because of the moderate dispersion in their data, the percent favorable is actually four point higher than the aggregate uh, of that academic unit. Uh, in instructor C, which is uh, vertically above the red dot, uh, has a, a, an interpolated median that's comparable to the aggregate. I don't want to use the word average, but it's comparable to the average in that unit. Uh, but because of the low dispersion, of 0.24, they have a 100% favorable uh, uh, rating, meaning that all the students that responded responded favorably for instructor C. Again, if the instructor is judged by the center of the data, whether we use the mean, the interpolated median, or any measure for the center, that instructor would have been judged to be average, but there is really nothing average about 100% favorable uh, rating. And again, we see that the, uh, the dispersion index is the clue why this instructor um, has a high percent favorable. Um, for an instructor B and D, uh, they have similar um, interpolated median. B uh, at the bottom has a higher uh, interpolated median of 1.6 or 4.6, um, and yet the percent favorable is 73 percent because of the high dispersion of 0.57. So more than one in four of the respondents did not did not read their experience favorably. Um, if this instructor is to be judged based on the center of the data, we will miss the fact that one of out of one out of four uh, respondents did, did not read their experience favorably. So this uh, an indication the high dispersion of 0.57 is an indication of some polarized rating. Uh, uh, um, there is a good number of students that rated their experience favorably, but there is also 25%, 27% that did not rate it favorably. And we would have missed that if we just judged uh, the, um, the instructor by the center of the data. <clears throat> In instructor D had a similar interpolated median of um, 4.5, but with 100% favorable rating. Again, that could be seen uh, uh, in the low dispersion of 0.25. So this example here uh, showed us that if we are to enter, if we are to integrate the data and look at it using the three measures, 
uh, interpreted median percent favorable and the dispersion index to explain to us uh, the results that we are seeing. Uh, it will uh, provide for a more meaningful um, uh, and also uh, a fair way of looking at the data as in the case of uh, instructor A. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I think if we go to the next slide, Zitaj, this brings me to the end of my part of the presentation. I'm gonna hand it over to, Z to Zitaj to uh, take us through a presentation of the dashboards. Yeah, thank you, Abdul Azim. Um, let me know, you can see my screen. Okay, good. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm gonna uh, start uh, presenting the instructor dashboard. Uh, as it is mentioned above, uh, we have two dashboards, one for the academic unit and one for the individual instructor. Uh, the first one is the individual instructor dashboard. And when uh, individual instructor logged into the dashboard, the first thing they will see is uh, about the dashboard information. And we have a couple of uh, tabs here that will provide additional information on to how, no how to navigate, about the measures that Abdul Azim explained earlier, and uh, other additional information. And in the individual instructor dashboard, we have uh, two visualizations and one uh, data summary. And the first visualization is uh, the scatter plot. And in this scatter plot, individual instructors can see uh, their survey result in context with the campus. Uh, here you can see the six year my questions displayed here. And on the background data for each UMI question, the background data, the light blue dots represent the campus, all instructors and all courses in the campus. And the dark blue dot in, uh, represent the course that the instructor taught in that specific academic year and term. And the red dot uh, indicates the campus aggregate. So they can see their uh, the student uh, survey result in context with uh, the campus one. And on this additional information, they can see when they hover over, they can see the course information, whether that course met the minimum, uh, recommended minimum required, met or not, the interpolated median, person favorable, and a dispersion index. So they can come to the filter and change any it's academic year in term, and they can see where uh, their survey results in context with the uh, with the campus. And one thing I just want to uh, give additional example on what Abdulazim mentioned here is uh, for a given interpolated median, uh, for a given uh, interpolated median when as the dispersion index in, in, uh, increases, the percent favorable uh, will go decline. So for this one, uh, we have four interpolate median, percent favorable 74% and dispersion index 0.48. But for the one we have on the bottom, you can see we have the same IM, but the dispersion in index increases to 6.66 and the percent favorable decreases as the in the dispersion index increases the percent favor decreases for a given u for a given interpolated media and here uh, we have here also like divided the pre and post uh, umi question just to demark that uh, in 2021 winter one the umi question was uh, changed so instructors can also see the pre 2021 uh, survey results in context with the campus here. So as I can see for each course under each term for all UMI questions. And then we have the trained line and in the trained line the individual instructors can see if they have taught the same course for the same in multiple years in terms, they can see how uh, the result changes through time. And we have similar uh, filters on the right, like campus, uh, pre and post, course section, academic year, 
academic section, but they need to select a specific course in order to see uh, how the trend changes through time for each specific course. And the last one on the individual instructor dashboard we have is a data summary. Here they can get the list of uh, courses uh, with the number of invited response rate, whether it meets the recommended minimum response rate, uh, along with the uh, three measures, interpolated medium percent favorable dispersion index with the campus-wide comparator. And on this data summary, they can uh, export in uh, CSV or uh, Excel format, and they can have it uh, prepare for to prepare for their payment promotion file. And for the other visualizations also, they can export to PDF and attach into uh, their files. So this is for the individual instructor. Uh, for the academic unit one, on the landing page, we have uh, similar information. They can get information about the dashboard, uh, about the measures, and additional information. Uh, if, you are, if, if they want to see like what is the pre and post uh, questions and what are the uh, recommended minimum uh, response rate thresholds and they can how to navigate uh, the dashboard and the in the first tab the uh, this one is different from the individual instructor is they can have a uh, high level numbers here like how many numbers number of service are completed uh, for that faculty uh, by year and uh, by term and how how like what percent of those surveys make the recommended minimum response rate? So it will give them just high level uh, figure. And when it comes to the uh, visualizations, we have a scatter plot. And in the academic unit scatter plot, uh, we have anyone who has access to that academic uh, unit will uh, see individual instructor in that academic unit in context with the faculty. So the background data here is the faculty, all courses and instructors in that faculty. And the dark blue is the individual instructor. The red the diamond here is the campus aggregate and the green diamond is the faculty aggregate. So that uh, a person from a specific academic unit can see the individual in the individual instructor in context with these two uh, aggregates uh, with the background drop of the uh, faculty data. And here they can filter uh, for pre and post uh, 2021 uh, for each academic year, academic period, and per each individual instructor. And also here we have uh, the shapes indicate whether uh, that survey, that course meets the recommended minimum uh, requirement or not. If it is circle, uh, it meets the recommended uh, minimum requirement meet. If it is an inverted triangle, it doesn't uh, meet. And we we'll, here we have the description about uh, those informations. Mm. As you can see, uh, we have here also some additional information. Uh, there is no data on these two quadrants, and the data is only on the second and on the third quadrant. And we have information about like what this orange line represents. Then we have uh, the data table, the same similar to what we have in the individual instructor, but here we have two additional comparators. Instead of the campus wide for the faculty, we have a department comparator and a year level comparator. So anyone uh, who has access from faculty can have a list of uh, courses for each instructor in the faculty for multiple years. So this will help just to prepare the payment promotion file and any, any uh, promotion related file uh, 
and it will help uh, the department or the instructors in that faculty. I think by this, I will finish presenting the dashboard.